welcome to what I think is the eighth episode of the Inner Skein Knitting Podcast. Uh, my name is Maria, and I'm coming to you from the northeastern part of Italy today, where I will be sharing what I've been knitting on for the past month or so. Um, I've actually been sick for four weeks in a row with a very bad cough. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was never ending and I was coughing so much that I think I, I don't think it's a fractured rib, but I think I bruised a rib. I don't know, <laughs> but it's quite painful, but it didn't keep me from knitting. So I'll share today what I've been working on in the past month or so. Um, but before I start, um, a few things. The first thing is that the pattern for the Fiorellini socks is uh, online. Um, it's available on Ravelry and also on Payhip, um, in case that some people can't use Ravelry. Um, I'll put the link uh, below in the description box. And yeah, it's available for now in English and French. Um, I would like to offer more languages eventually, but that's a down the line thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I did the French translation myself. So, um, I hope it's fine. French is my first language, so I'm not too scared about the French itself, but it's more like the French knitting patterns that I'm not super familiar with. I've, um, I mostly knit English knitting patterns, um, except for when I do some test knitting uh, from time to time, um, where I'll test some patterns in French. So I do have a bit of a background, but yeah, it was a an interesting um, exercise, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is that there's a few people that were um, a bit concerned about colorwork socks in general. Um, I know it's something that is not super easy to do, um, and so if you're considering making these, I guess um, I'll share a few tips of what. I think helps to um, knit colorwork socks, uh, so basically knitting colorwork on very small circumference in the round um, at a very tight gauge for socks. Um, and yeah, I think that you know if you've tried to knit ten different pairs of colorwork socks and you've tried all the tricks, then you know maybe this pattern is just not for you. Um, for example, my boyfriend he has a very large instep. And so I don't think I could ever make him a pair of colorwork socks. It would just not work for his foot. So I guess just trying to say that it's normal if um, these types of patterns don't work for you. But here are some tips that you can um, use if uh, it's like your first pair or two and you haven't been able to get the color part over your heel. I know that that's something that's very frequent. It happened to me when I tried to knit color socks for the first time, um, but I was able to overcome that. So yeah, I'll share a few tips. The first thing is to practice, practice, practice. Um, I think that tension is something that plays a big role. Um, I know that I'm a very tight sock knitter, like when I knit on small circumference for socks, I knit very, very tightly. Um, and so I've had to try to loosen up things a little bit when knitting color work, especially. Um, and yeah, along, so practicing along with a few tips that I'll share uh, might help you. Um, and so the other thing is something that's written in the pattern, I suggest to go up one needle size when you are um, at the color work section. Um, this will make your the fabric um, as stretchy as the stock net part, or close to anyways. Um, so that will help a little bit. Some people even recommend to go up two needle sizes. So these socks are knit using 2.5 millimeter needles. So in the pattern, I recommend to go up for the color work section to 2.75, but you may want to go up to a three millimeter needle um, if that helps. 
The second thing is to keep your floats very loose in the back. So like when I knit color, for example, I really take my time um, and I make sure that the floats in the back are not too tight so that I'm leaving enough space for them. And the way that I typically do this is just by like spreading the stitches on my needle. Um, I have a sock here I'm working on for my boyfriend. I'll just show you what I mean. Um, so basically, like when I knit, um, so it might be difficult to show like this, but uh, this is where I would spread the stitches like this to make sure that once you go with your float in the back here, that the float is as long as it can be um, for the fabric. So that's tip number two, three, I don't remember anymore. <laughs> so keeping the floats very loose and also to catch the floats only when necessary. So in the pattern, there's a few places where depending on the size, so like especially at the beginning and at the end, you'll have anywhere I think from nine to 11 stitches between, um, so like between the pink here. Um, and so I would recommend to catch here in the middle. I think in the pattern I say to catch every, like if your floats are longer than five stitches, I would catch it. Um, I don't think it's necessary to catch them every like two or three stitches. I think that's a bit too much. Um, so I'll just catch them when it's necessary. Um, typically for like a color work sweater, for example, um, it's recommended to catch your floats every inch or so. In a sock, I recommend to do a bit less than one inch, just because you can imagine that if you have like one inch of thread here in the back of the work, you can easily get your toes stuck inside, which is not very pleasant. Um, so yeah, catch your floats, but don't do it too often. So just when necessary and like in the middle of these very long floats here. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is actually knit the sock inside out. It doesn't change the way that you knit, but I'll show you again with this one. So like this is the right side of the work, but you could just like flip it like this so that this is the wrong side. And again, this is complicated to show, but if I'm knitting like this, so the right side is on here and I'm knitting like this with like the rest of the work in the front instead of at the back, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so that will make your floats a bit because your floats now will come in the back. And since you have like your circumference like this, it kind of like delimits um, the, the length of the float because if your float um, is, if I turn it the other way around, again, if your float is here in the, like the way that the knitting is bent, I guess, um, it can make your floats um, shorter versus when you bend the fabric like this, it can really spread out. So yeah, I think that's all of the tips that I know of. I think that if, for example, you were working on an all over color work sock where there's color work everywhere, I would even recommend to size up completely in the pattern from one size up. So for example, if you're usually knitting a 64 stitch sock, um, I would go up to the 68 stitch count or even the 72. Um, but since this, the color work is just at the top, then you could um, like make this part the size up, for example, and then decrease stitches in the stocking knit part until the um, regular stitch count that you would usually do, or the one corresponding to your size. So yeah, those were all my tips to knit color work socks that fit. But then again, sometimes, you know, depending on the shape of your feet, it still may not be enough um, but yeah i hope that it can help a few people and if you have more tips please do leave them in the comments i'm sure that other people would like to hear them as well as me <laughs> all 
All right, and then the other piece of um, admin that I have is that um, the pattern for the Irene sweater by Rebecca from Journey Three Yarn is now available. Um, I've tested it, and so she was offering a free copy of the pattern for the test knitters to offer to a friend. And I thought that I would do like a tiny mini giveaway here. So if you're interested in having the uh, the copy for free, I think that I will, instead of like asking people to comment, um, I'll ask people who are interested in the pattern to just give me their email address in a, probably like a Google form that I'll link below. So just drop down your email there, then I'll draw randomly a name or an email address, send that to Rebecca, and then she will uh, give you your free pattern. So yeah, if you're interested in winning a copy, you can do that. All right, I think that's it for the admin me stuff. <laughs> so the first thing that I'll chat about is my Barbro blouse. Um, it's a pattern by Knitting for Olive. I think that I shared about it um, two episodes ago, maybe. Um, I have made a little bit of progress uh, on the body. So it's a sweater that is knit or a blouse that is knit um, bottom up. So I think I had made like this last time. And so you can see that I have completed the body now. Um, and it's not blocked, so it looks a bit funny. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see it blocked. And I still haven't tried it on, so I'm also excited to see um, how it fits. So let's see. Um, what can I say about this one? There's a few places where I did like tiny modifications. Um, it's a size inclusive pattern which is great so there's a lot of sizes and I mean you can imagine that with like a stitch pattern like this it must have been very complicated to grade um, and so there's like I think that the size that I'm making like if you were making another size you probably wouldn't encounter the same thing as me like for example when you do the shaping for the neck here for my size for example like here it was just like there was no pattern if I remember correctly like you weren't making eyelets here it was just like stocking it this whole part and when I noticed in the pattern that that is what was happening I decided to go on Ravelry to um, see the versions of the people that made my size which I think I'm making the size small or two, the second size in the pattern. Um, so when I saw that this is what they were asking me to do, I went um, to see uh, what other people's versions look like and I didn't really love it. So I decided to just modify and add a few more eyelets um, there which is not complicated to do. Like, as you can see, the stitch pattern is basically like these six eyelets. Um, and then on the side, you have like columns and in the columns is where you, you're doing the decreases of the, like for the eyelets, you increase stitches and then you decrease in these columns. And so I think that they didn't include the eyelets there just because it would have been complicated to because you're decreasing like half the stitches in one column and half the stitches in the other column and so uh, where is it here there's like a part where you only have one column on the side and nothing here so what I decided to do is just on the edge here I would decrease a stitch um, instead of doing whatever they were um, asking you to do in the pattern. So yeah, that's what I did. I think also for the underarm, 
no that one is fine so yeah i think that's the only modification that i did for the top and now you can see it's a like a keyhole detail at the back where i'll have to add some button loops i think that are made with a uh, crochet um, and then sew the buttons there like this and obviously the sleeves so i started my first sleeve they are also knit bottom up and the i think that the main thing that people were saying that was complicated about the pattern on ravelry anyways was the sleeve increases because you're starting out with a very small circumference and then you're increasing um, to give space for your upper arm um, and then eventually you're probably casting off stitches and then instead of working in the round you work back and forth to shape the um, the shoulder not the shoulder but the armhole <laughs> armhole shaping sleeve shaping you know <laughs> um but yeah so the i found the instructions pretty easy to um, understand in the pattern but again since i'm very picky <laughs> i changed a few things um essentially so i don't know if we'll be able to see well yeah we can see so the increases happen here at the beginning of round and in the pattern they tell you to you know you increase two stitch um, per round every um, few rows um, every x number of rows um, until you have enough to make another repeat like this um, so essentially you would have only stocking it here but again i wanted some eyelets to continue the pattern and so i i thought it would be like pretty easy but then since the like the increased rows um, don't fall all the time on a row where you have eyelets i had to basically charted the the increases in stitch fiddle um, because i'm like a visual person i need to see what is going to happen um, before it happens <laughs> And so I charted the increases and this is what it looks like now. So essentially like here, for example, I have two eyelets in a row that I was supposed to increase two stitches. And so I just made two eyelets instead of the increase instructions that they were providing in the pattern. Um, but there were other places where it was a bit more complicated. So I don't even know if I can explain it um just verbally but i don't know if ever you have the pattern and uh, you want to know how i did this just let me know and i can maybe share the like with you if you bought the pattern because i don't want to share the stitch pattern um if you haven't bought the pattern but if you did and you want to know how i did it let me know um i don't know though if it would work for all the sizes I don't remember exactly how it works in the pattern um but yeah so this is one of the sleeves i think that both sleeves in the pattern are worked exactly the same but again because i like to complicate my life i think that i will do a right sleeve and a left sleeve um and mirror them so uh essentially like you start your increases here in this column like this um, and you need to start these increases in a column because if you start here um, it's gonna look strange basically you would need to create a column in the center i think it would look a bit bizarre so you have to start your increases in one of those columns so i think that for the right side like i'll do don't even know anymore which i'm okay this for me is the left i don't know what it is on the screen but this is the left and so i think for my left sleeve i will continue the increases on the left column and for the right sleeve i'll do the opposite so let's see how that goes so far so good um one two three four five 
I'm like almost halfway there. I think there are 12 increase rounds for my size. So yeah, let's see what happens. And other than that, for this one, I don't think I have anything else to report for now. Um, other than the fact maybe that I really wanted this for spring and it's actually maybe too warm now <laughs> for this. Um, but yeah, I was trying like to, I was trying really hard to finish this before the warm weather and I was kind of putting a bit of pressure on myself. Um, uh, it was kind of sad when I realized that, okay, I'm probably not going to have this for this spring. But then I have to remind myself that, you know, I knit because of one, I enjoy the process, um, but also to make myself clothes that I'm going to wear for a very, very long time. Um, and so there is no rush. This will get worn next spring or probably even next fall. Um, yeah. So no rush in finishing these things because we most likely have a lot of other seasons <laughs> ahead of us to wear them. Okay, so that was it for this one. Now, another pair of socks. Um, last time, I think that I showed one of the socks. Um, sorry, the lighting is a bit all over the place today. It's a bit too bright outside. Um, but yeah, last time, I think I showed one of the socks and they didn't have a name and they looked a bit differently than this. Um, they look a bit strange. Um, when they are not on the foot, <laughs> but once they're stretched out, I think they look really nice. Um, so this is the, I think I was calling this a little flower motif before, but the, since then I've realized that they kind of look like buds, um, like before the leaves come out on the trees. Um, and so I decided to call them the bocciolo socks, which in Italian means buds. Um, so far, I don't know why I'm feeling very inspired by the Italian words. Um, it's also a fun way for me to learn new words um, and or to have words that I know of, but that I have a hard time like making them stick in my head <laughs> to do so. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that I will eventually use English or French for pattern names, but for the moment, I think they are all going to be Italian for that reason. But yeah, so it basically creates this little um, bud motif um, on like columns of knit through the back loop stitches. And the particularity with these is that it's a toe up sock and I decided to do a, an anatomical toe like this. So they are a bit taller here and here they like taper off like the um, shape of my toes um, so yeah and they're also symmetrical because obviously I mean I'm not done yet with the second one but the other side is uh, mirrored which is a bit difficult to show because this one is not blocked yet but like this um, so yeah the anatomical toe and since they are knit toe up I think last time I shared that um, like the typical, or what I think anyways, is the standard toe-up method to have a gusset and heel flap. Um, I wasn't enjoying the fit of because as I explained in length, I think last time, um, there's like too much fabric here um, because people essentially just like increase all the stitches in the gusset. But I went back, I frogged this one, and um, I reworked the heel, or like the, yeah, just the heel turn I think is different. Um, and there's less increases in the gusset. And so this is um, kind of like a mirrored version of your, our, I think, favorite um, cuff down socks but in a toe up version. So like the stitch counts are like at all the different places are all the same. And so the fit, they should fit exactly like a cuff down sock with a heel flap and gusset. Um, and they fit really well 
on myself um, they do fit exactly um, like those socks that I just mentioned um, so those are like the two particular construction elements um, and then the other part is the stitch motif that I'm currently working on a tutorial for just because it's like it uses symbols that are a bit different than what I think most people are used to so I think it's going to be um, easier for the visual people like me to um, see how it's done um, yeah and since last time I think last time the one that I made also had the motif on the back and I wasn't crazy about that so I changed that so the back is just stocking it like this and the so I designed them at first to have the motif in the front and in the back um, and so the ribbing was also designed to like flow nicely with that kind of sock but then since I changed it I had to modify the ribbing and it's probably my least favorite part of the sock um, but I, I think I ended up with a solution that um, I like but it just means that the ribbing is also symmetrical so it was a bit of a a bit complicated to write down um, and so I think once like to knit it is going to be fine I don't think the, ins the instructions are complicated but it's you know it, I had to use more words than just knit one per one to the end <laughs> um, but yeah so it's basically like a three by one um, twisted rib or half twisted rib because um, they're regular pearls but um, knit through the back loop stitches here and the other thing that I changed actually is the um, cast off because or bind off because um, typically before when I was doing toe up socks for the bind off I was using I don't remember the name is it uh, I don't remember I will write it down um, but I found that that one was like way too flary like you can see a bit of flare like this but once it's on the leg it's actually fine um, but the previous method that I was using was still flaring a lot even when it was on the leg so it wasn't staying put on the leg um, and so since that wasn't working I was doing usually a just like a regular bind off but that is kind of hit and miss because sometimes like depending on the tension it can be way too tight or way too loose um, so this time I decided to do a sewn bind off so I think it's an Elizabeth Zimmerman technique um, but I followed a um, very pig knits tutorial um, and yeah I really like it again it's looking a little bit flary like this but once it's on the foot for me anyways it's perfect so i like to discover that technique also for toe-up socks and um, as i was saying i will do a tutorial for the the bud stitch um, and i tried to film that this morning but it wasn't working and also i tried to film that last week but my throat was not cooperating <laughs> Um, so that's why I've been not procrastinating but that's why it's not done yet um, and so as soon as I can get that I will include in the pattern send it to technical editing and eventually look for uh, test knitters for this one um, so hopefully soon-ish <laughs> depending on how quick I can uh, do this and yeah actually some people were asking me because um, I spoke a little bit about technical editing before on um, this channel so I'm a trained tech editor and so some people were asking me including my boyfriend like why are you paying for technical editing if you're a technical editor <laughs> um, and the easy answer is just that tech editing should be done by someone who didn't write the pattern um, because it's always good to have a second set of eyes to look over your calculations and everything else um, so that's why I get my patterns tech edited <laughs> all right 
Um, the next thing is my uh, Stella quilt cushion. I think last time I had just made the like test square to see the gauge. Um, some basket here. Oh, ribs hurt. <laughs> It's reducing my mobility a little bit, um, but I can feel that it's starting to heal. So hopefully it's going to be fine soon. All right. So basically I have done this so far. So a like half of the front, so a quarter of the total cushion cover. And yeah, last time when I showed my swatch i was saying that my test square was too big um and i have since figured out that it was just because of the yarn that i'm using because i'm knitting the dk weight uh, version but this yarn is more of like a worsted weight i think um but i'm using the recommended needle size so i thought it would be fine but it wasn't <laughs> so but yeah, I've noticed because I just kept going with the same needle size and the same gauge or stitch count. Um, and I noticed that when I use like a, I think I'm using, yeah, I'm doubling fingering weight yarns everywhere else. And for those, it's fine. And you can see that like it kind of puckers at some places because this one is the correct gauge and this one is a bit too big. But I think that, you know, since it's supposed to have some negative ease and it's going to stretch over the cushion, it's going to be fine, which is why I decided to just um, go for it anyways. And because this is made to fit a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter cushion insert. Um, and so I decided that either it will not be like super stretched on the cushion or I'll get a bigger cushion. <laughs> Easy fix. So yeah, um, I have to say that I am not enjoying the process that much. I think that everyone who's making like the Stella Quilt cushion or the Sweet Shop blanket is uh, saying how much they enjoy making it. So I thought that I would too. But I think that for me, Maybe it was just because I was sick when I was knitting on this and maybe I didn't have like the brain capacity for that. Um, but I found that, or I guess for the sweet shop blanket it would be different, but for this one, since the direction of the knitting is different, like you can see here, it goes like this, there it goes like that. Um, there's four different methods to um, knit and join these squares together and I think that it's like passing from one to the other like I can't memorize it and so I have to look at the pattern every time and that's what's kind of it's not annoying me <laughs> but it's not as enjoyable as I, as I thought it would be essentially um, but I mean, I'm halfway there, I'm going to finish it and I'm sure that I'm going to enjoy a lot the finished product. Um, yeah. And I think that because, yeah, there's um, four different methods. And I think that my favorite one is the one where you have to, like, you pick up all these stitches here, all these stitches there, and then you work with short rows like this here. And then for the other half of the square or the other triangle, um, you just do decreases. So that's my favorite type of square to work. And so I think that for the back, I will try to make squares like that because I don't think I'm going to have enough of the main color here um, to do the whole back. So I think that instead I will do just squares so like they're all going to be knit in the same direction and all the ones like in the middle essentially if that makes sense i'll have to think about it <laughs> a bit more but i think that i'll use that method and just make like full squares instead of like the half and half like this in the back so i would have like 16 squares of like one color each 
which I think would look really nice as well. So yeah, I'm willing to experiment uh, with this pattern to see if I can find a method that I really enjoy because I think it's a really good um, scrap buster project and I would love to make a blanket like this one day. But I don't know if like the triangle thing is for me. <laughs> so if I enter the squares, it's a bit more simple. I still get to use some leftovers. I think that would be um, perfect for me. So let's see. All right, so that was it for the Stella quilt cushion. And the next thing is a summer top that I cast on. I actually wanted to cast on one of the two summer tops that I talked about last time. Um, but then I decided to pivot and to cast on something else. I don't know how the idea came to me. I think that when I was sick, I, for some reason, had like a million design ideas, both for socks and garments. <laughs> and so I did a lot of swatching. Um, and one of the, the ideas that I had was for this um, summer top or spring or summer top, I guess. Um, that will have like a bit of like a cap sleeve so like it's not a tank top it's not a t-shirt it's kind of in the middle um which is something that i don't find a lot of patterns for online so i thought that i would um, try to design it and i basically made like the whole top portion like just before joint no i think i had joined in the round um, and then there was a few things that I wasn't um, 100% about. So I decided to frog that part, or the whole thing actually, and start again. So this is all I have so far. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's going to be a, a little top um, where the back will be worked with the, some short row shaping. Um, so the back panel will be worked. And then the fronts. Um, think I'm thinking about like a very short collar situation but probably not ribbing because that's one of the things that didn't work with the yarn that I'm working with because it's a summery yarn um, so the stretch is not great and so with ribbing I didn't love it um, but yeah that's to be determined but essentially when I was doing a lot of swatching, I just need to find the correct swatch. Yeah, this one. Again, I don't know how the idea came to me, but I was like, I had like an obsession for a few days with trying to like make knitted fabric look like other types of fabric, like crochet, macrame, or even like weaving, basket weaving, cane furniture all these things <laughs> and so I was just testing out a lot of different uh, motifs or stitch patterns and this is the one that um, I decided to work with for the moment so I don't know if it's going to blow up if I but yeah, it's like this so instead of ribbing for the bottom anyways and probably also a little bit on the sleeves um, I'm going to use this stitch pattern and it's like a mix of a bit of ribbing and the eyelets are not worked with your typical like yarn overs and knit two togethers um so yeah i think it's a bit interesting i really enjoyed working the sample um and yeah i think it's going to be um fun um, and yeah, let's see, it's, this would be my first garment pattern. Um, and so I think I'm, I think for all of my designs so far and probably moving forward, it's like, I have the idea and then until I can really tell like, okay, I'm going to write the pattern. I need to like, I think, see the finished object <laughs> to see if I really want to write it down. But so yeah, this is to be determined. Um, I'm still working on it, and I think I forgot to mention what yarn this is. 
um, some mess in here. <laughs> There's basically this yarn, which is the onion, um, organic cotton, nettles, and wool. Um, I think this is a, yeah, it's a Danish yarn brand. Um, and I think that most of their yarns are um, sustainable. I don't know um, what qualifies a sustainable yarn for them. Sorry, there's too much sun outside. I'm not complaining, but <laughs> um, yeah. And so the it's mostly cotton, so 44% organic cotton, 34% of nettle, and 22% of wool. So, and it's, is it a, I don't think it's a fingering, it's like a sport weight-ish, um, or heavy fingering, I guess. Um, and since there's a bit of wool, maybe it's going to be too hot for like very hot summer days but i can see myself wearing that a lot um, on days where it's not so so warm um and yeah i think that so i have this in stash and i forgot about it but then i was listening to i think it was uh martina from we grow wild um, I was listening to one of her knitting podcasts and she mentioned this yarn and I think she, I could be wrong, I think she mentioned that it was her favorite summer yarn and I know that she works with a lot of summer yarns and so I thought, huh, if it's her favorite then maybe it's worth um, trying and I remember that I do have some in stash and I tried to make something with it last year um, but it was like a combination of the yarn and the pattern that just wasn't working and I think I even ran out of yarn and it was just a mess and so I decided to recycle that project just frog it completely and um, try to um, knit something else with it but I didn't have enough so I ordered I think uh, two more balls of this um, so now I should have enough to have a top in this uh, yarn for this spring or summer so yeah and usually I don't have an acquisition section but um, I it was my birthday at the beginning of the month and my boyfriend brought me to a yarn shop um, a little yarn shop that I've been dying to visit ever since we moved here um, it's called Lana al Pascolo. It's, um, I think, 45 minutes maybe by car north of Verona. Um, it's in the province of Verona. And they, it's basically this woman, I think her name is uh, Cristina, and she is a breeder of Bronga sheep. Um, and I've been following them on Instagram for a long time now and I was very excited to go visit and so that was my birthday gift <laughs> and so I got a few things from there um, essentially they so they have these Doronga sheep um, and I think it's a native sheep breed from the province of Verona and um, I think they used to be endangered but now um, with several different projects to save the sheep, um, they're now safe again. Um, and so yeah, so this woman, she um, she has a sheep, she frees the sheep, sheep breeder, I don't know how to, what is the correct term? Um, but yeah, and she also um, does a lot of dyeing of the yarns that they produce with um, the fleece of their sheep. Um, and it's all done naturally so it's very interesting um show you what i got this was my birthday gift so <laughs> not sponsored but sponsored by my boyfriend maybe <laughs> um so yeah the so you can see here these are the sheep we actually didn't get to see them because it was like a, a pretty it's kind of like a rainy day so they i don't think they were outside 
um, but yeah, didn't get to see the sheep, but I got to touch a lot of yarn. <laughs> so this is just the undyed um, color. Um, and I think this one was on sale because it was like from their last production. Um, so I got this one. Okay, sorry, it cut for some reason. Um, but yeah, I was saying, I think that from the same uh, line, I got this one. This is the name of the yarn. I don't even know if I want to try to pronounce it, but it's basically Juliet. Um, since they're in the province of Verona, I think that they have um, the Juliet and Romeo um, yarn bases. But yeah, I got um, this little green. I don't know if it says what it's dyed with. This, I don't know also how to pronounce and what it means, but I'll try to find the translation and write it here. Um, but yeah, it's a beautiful green um, and I have a few ideas for socks for this. It's not technically a sock yarn. Um, and I think that used on its own, maybe it's not the best choice for a sock yarn. Um, but I think that because I was talking to the, not the shop owner, but um, the lady that works there, Antonella. She was very, very um, knowledgeable. I really enjoyed to talk with her about these things. So I was asking her like if I can make socks with this because they do also sell a few like machine knit items and they do sell socks. So I was asking like if the socks that they had were made with this and like asking a bit about the durability. Um, and she was saying that, um, like, if I knit this with a different thread, so like on the, probably like the heels and toes, if you combine another thread with this, either like a nylon or maybe even like a cotton thread um, to reinforce those parts, it could work. Um, but I was thinking also maybe a silk mohair would be nice um, to reinforce it um, or I was having I was thinking about like different um, type of, uh, types of reinforced stitches because for example like on the heel flap of some socks like this one um, you slip some stitches um, every other row and so it creates like a kind of like a double layered fabric and so like what if I would do this for like the whole sole for example um, I'm thinking about but I would like to use this in socks um, otherwise I'm going to find another project for them um, but yeah, I have a few design ideas for this I was mostly inspired by the landscape like everything there is very green and at the time that we were there all the the fruit trees are flowering um, here and so there was a lot of like green and the white flowers and so I'm thinking something like this inspired by the okay I don't know why it keeps cutting but I think I was talking about the inspiration for a future sock design potentially for these um, and yeah I think it would be nice to incorporate um, the inspiration of the scenery from the land um, where the sheep um, that made this wool um, live on <laughs> so yeah to be determined and then i also got a sweater quantity of this one it's just beige but for me this is very special <laughs> because i find that I really like a nice beige but I think that it's very difficult to find like a good shade like this one I don't know if the lighting will really do it justice but it's like a, a beige beige like usually I find that because I'll explain um, the blend of this but I find that usually like natural colors they tend to look a bit gray to me um, and a bit more cold tones and this one is a bit more warm which I really like um, and yeah they have the Bologna uh, sheep like I was saying but they also have alpacas on their land um, and so 
they have this um, this yarn base that comes in three different colors. So they mix the let's see, yes, it's seventy five no sorry seventy percent of the Bronya wool. 15% of alpaca and 15% of silk. So this one is very soft. Um, this one is also very soft, much softer than I thought it would be. Um, but this is like next level because of the silk and the alpaca. And yeah, what I was getting at is that they have white alpaca, brown and black. And so they have this base in three different um, natural colors. So one is white basically like this one from the this wool that is mixed with the um, white alpaca then they have this one mixed with the brown alpaca that makes this beige and then they have the um this one mixed with the black alpaca um fleece that um makes a um, gray <laughs> base and then i mean i got the undyed but then she also dyes again all naturally um, the same base in the three different um, natural colors in the same dye bath. And so you get like all these different shades of the same color um, and everything was beautiful. I had a very hard time to choose, but at the end I decided to go um, with the safe for me <laughs> choice of just the beige. So yeah, I got six of these. They're 50 gram skeins with 180 meters each. I think I may have to buy more of this because I, I don't know exactly which sweater pattern I would use, but I think I would want something very oversized and I may not have enough with 300 grams of this. So maybe I'll have to do a little order. <laughs> Let's see. And then the last thing that I got is actually fiber um, because they sell um, yarn, they sell fiber, they sell um, felted items um, or just like the felted wool itself so that you can use to make things. Um, what else? They also had some fabric that I think was woven with like the those yarns that I showed. Um, and yeah, a few other things that escape my memory for now, but they had fiber. And I've mentioned before that I really want to get into spinning. Um, so I decided to buy some, but now I'm too scared to actually spin it. <laughs> but this is what I got. It doesn't show up very well on camera, but it's like, um a lot of like pinks and um light purple i guess a bit of gray some of the undyed poking through and um so yeah it looks the color looks nicer in person um but yeah this is very special too because this was dyed um in a solar bath <laughs> so they basically put um like the roving like this in um, like buckets, uh, big containers, uh, jar gla glass jars <laughs> uh, with uh, the wool, some water and some dye stuff. And so they had different colors. Um, some were like much more vibrant, um, but yeah, so they put different dye stuff in those jars and then they leave it out in the sun for a few months over the summer and um, it dies like this. So I thought that was very, very special. So I got this one. Um, they were also selling the undyed and I also regret not getting the undyed because I think it would be better maybe to um, practice. So yeah, that might also go in a future order if I do end up buying more yarn from them, um, which I'm sure I will eventually, but yeah. Um, and this one, since it spent the summer outside in the sun, it's, um, I forget the term that they use, but like it's not um, felted, but it's a little bit like, 
like the fibers are a bit too um, together. I don't know, don't remember how she explained it, but basically she said that it would be better to card it before I spin it. Um, and so I don't have anything to card with right now also. So this will um, probably stay in my stash for a little while before I can make that happen. Um, but yeah, also I'm kind of scared to card it because the, I think you're going to lose like the, the different colors. Like if you card it, it's going to blend everything together. So to be determined what happens with this one. But yeah, it's also very soft and squishy. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Alright, so that's all the yarny stuff that I had for today. Um, other than that, I've been a bit too sick to really enjoy the spring, but in the past two weekends I've been feeling good enough to actually go outside um, and enjoy a bit. Um, yeah, spring is definitely my favorite season and seeing all the flowers makes me very, very happy. And uh, yeah, the other day we also picked up some... Uh, what is the name in English? In Italian it's aglio orsino. I think it translates to wild garlic. Um, so it's like a pretty big leaf and it smells like garlic. Um, and it grows like in the woods at this time um, of the year. So we picked up some and I made some pesto with it. Um, I might insert a bit of footage of that at the end with, with a bit of my personal recipe that is not really a recipe. I just mix as I go, but yeah, that I don't know why. It just brings me so much joy to like use these seasonal uh, things to make food. <laughs> but yeah, and... Yeah, I have a lot of ideas for upcoming projects and now that the weather is um, getting nicer here I want to um, start to sew again. I haven't had motivation to sew in the last few months but I feel it coming again so that might be happening around here soon and also probably some punch needling. Um, yeah a bit of crochet too. I think that to go with the Stella Quill cushion, I would like to make a crochet cushion um, because we just like bought a piece of furniture for the kind of the entrance with like a wardrobe and on the side there's like a bench. So I would like to put the Stella Quill cushion there with maybe another one for crochet. Um, so yeah, lots of fun projects. Um, as always, <laughs> planned in my mind. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope that you are um, enjoying spring, if spring is there for you um, now. I know that in Canada, for example, the other day here it was like 25 degrees and in Canada my parents had a snowstorm. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry if you are tired of the snow. Probably don't watch the footage that I'll put at the end because might make you a bit depressed. <laughs> I know that I used to be very sad when it was supposed to be spring but it was still snowy in Canada. Um, I think that's my favorite part of living here now. The weather is much nicer. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that you're also enjoying what you're knitting on and um, feel free to share in the comments what it is that you're currently working on. I would love to hear about it. And yeah, don't forget to um, apply if you want to win the copy of the Irene sweater. And yeah, I'll talk to you next time. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>